Hi there and welcome to the Tech Spot where we sniff out the groundbreaking new concepts and technology disrupting Africa's traditional sectors. I'm Ucheo Koronkwa. Well, TechSpot now heads to Egypt, where startups such as payments company Fori are attracting regional and global investments worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, Fori is not just the first indigenous tech company to go public in Africa. It also became the first tech unicorn in the country in 2020, with an estimated market cap of over $2 billion. Well, now here's our Yasser Kim with their story. Fauri is a leading digital transformation and e-payments platform. Its IPO in 2019 turned out to be a game changer for the startup climate in the North African country. It was oversubscribed three times and profits jumped by 135% in only two years. <laughs> Fauri has been a great success and it brought here the concept that good startups are the ones that solve a big problem on the ground. Fauri found there is a problem in financial transactions between Egyptians because a large portion of the population didn't have bank accounts. It solved the problem by providing e-payment solutions that allowed non-banking payments and money transfers. It has grown into a holding company with four subsidiaries. Fauri went on to be the first unicorn in the region, exceeding $1 billion in value in less than a year. The success of Fauri has opened the door for an influx of local and foreign investments to the startup scene in Egypt, which showed a lot of promise and potential for growth. Startups received another boost in 2020. Curfews, lockdowns, social distancing and travel restrictions after the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic pushed more people to go online. While startups started to pick up in 2020, they thrived in 2021. Fintech and e-commerce sectors led the rally. According to Enterprise Egypt, there were 76 investments in Egyptian startups in 2021, a 55% increase than 2020. Startups raised in excess of $500 million from only 100 million the year before, and 60% of financing was pumped by foreign investors. One of the top three seed earners is Maxapp. It's a B2B food and grocery platform providing tech solutions to directly link suppliers with retailers, negating the middlemen. They raised $60 million in 2021. The main reason for this fund is for us to expand in the MENA region. Uh, we still don't know exactly where we're going. We have a few countries that we've pinpointed. It depends on the value proposition as well as the market product fit. But we see three to two countries that uh, might be of great benefit for us to move there. Maxab's value grew five-fold in two years, and its core assets jumped from three to 17 warehouses in seven cities in Egypt. The company went on to acquire Moroccan startup Waze Cap to scale out the Maghreb region. But the year's biggest winner was state-owned fintech and e-payments company eFinance, which broke records when it released shares in October. It was seven times oversubscribed, with foreigners accounting to 72% of total investors. During the coronavirus, our business flourished for two reasons. First, because of the regulations and facilities provided by the government and central bank. Secondly, the people shifted their behavior towards online because it was faster and easier for them. This increased our output as the government's e-payment transactions grew by 100%, while other sectors grew by an average 27%. The overall growth of the IT sector reached 16% and is still growing. The e-finance IPO cemented the position of fintechs in Egypt. Meanwhile, Swivel, a local mass transportation ride-hailing platform, became the role model for startup success in general when it merged with Queen's Gambit SPAC and is now to be listed at Nasdaq with a value exceeding $1.5 billion, the largest of its kind in the Middle East and North Africa. 
But what made Egypt the top destination for venture capital in the MENA region, on par with the United Arab Emirates? You have the largest population in the region with high purchasing power online. 60% of the population logs on the internet daily. You have about 100 million smartphones, so it is the perfect climate for e-commerce. IT and fintech services allow a young startup to easily achieve early stage growth and accordingly will have a better chance to succeed regionally and abroad. There are extremely skilled and talented IT technicians here who are cheaper than abroad, so cost-wise, there is a good return on investment. These success stories have created an appetite for investors to tap into the Egyptian market, drawing a highly promising outlook by analysts for 2022. Now, currently, three countries receive the bulk of the flow of both local and international venture capital to the continent, Nigeria, Kenya and South Africa. They represent Africa's most connected populace and growing economies, which investors see as the perfect environment to attract foreign capital before others. But if you run down the list of the first African startups to hit that coveted $1 billion valuation, majority are from Africa's most populous nation, Nigeria. Now, back in 2021, Nigeria earned the title of Africa's unicorn capital. And let's now take a look at the reasons why. For over a decade, investors have been predicting that Nigerian startups would break out. But there's a reason why the world's largest venture capital firms are vying for stakes in Nigeria's tech sector right now. Nigeria has become Africa's unofficial capital for fintech investment and digital finance, with over 40% of Nigerian adults having bank accounts and digital payments surpassing $250 billion in the last two to three years. The FinTech Association of Nigeria is estimating that startups raised 1.37 billion out of the $4 billion raised by African startups, despite the effects of the pandemic. Analysts say that investors are also especially keen to cash in on Nigeria's demographic dividend. By some estimates, by 2100, Nigeria might be home to over 800 million people. The Nigerian payments company Flutterwave is now the most valuable startup in Africa. The Lagos-based firm was set up in 2016. It recently raised $250 million, effectively giving it a $3 billion valuation and making it the biggest payment startup on the continent. It is at the forefront of a group of companies that have made Lagos the hottest fintech ecosystem home in Africa. I want to deepen our presence in the countries where we are present today. Uh, expand into some, you know, few other markets. But then the core thing is, want to do what we're doing at an even more intentional level, and so you know, make more effort in the countries where we are present today. Uh, come alongside the merchants, the small businesses, as we've always done in a more intentional way. And this allows us to be even more aggressive, more intentional uh, in doing what we're doing from the beginning. But there are other sectors in Nigeria besides fintech that are beneficiaries of these funds flowing into the country. Andela, for example, it's a startup that connects African software engineering talent to global companies. Last year, the company raised $200 million from investors. This seven-year-old firm is now valued at $1.5 billion after Flutterwave and Ope. Andela now has engineers in more than 80 countries across several continents. The firm says the investment from SoftBank is being deployed to expand its workforce and operations. We started this journey in Africa and now we've expanded beyond and we're looking to, to scale our efforts. Um, you know, from a continent perspective, I think it's exciting also to see how the Africa tech ecosystem is growing and maturing um, and also to see the rise of other startups that that are achieving this status. And there are plans to invest in developing products to simplify global hiring and make engineers' lives easier. We will continue to expand our talent offering beyond just software engineering. And this is based on the needs of our customers. However, the startups digitizing B2B e-commerce and retail in Africa are also now starting to grab the headlines especially after the pandemic paved the way for widespread offline retail and commerce disruption. One of them is the B2B e-commerce platform 
Trade Depot. The company connects consumer goods brands to thousands of retailers and helps with distribution. It just raised $110 million in the equity and debt funding as it looks to bring in more retail stores and to expand its buy now, pay later service across the continent. We think there is an interesting opportunity here to go to be a leading uh, distribution channel for FMCG, for consumer goods generally across the continent. Conversely, we think as well that we're well positioned to be the ideal supply partner for, for retail. And, and we're really very aggressive about our ambitions to, to, to look to be that leading party on the continent. Now, given the growth of fintech in Nigeria and, of course, other key markets in Africa, one can now conclude that most of Africa's unicorns are payment-focused fintech companies. But with players such as Trade Depot from Nigeria, analysts are saying that we should definitely expect more unicorns to emerge in other sectors pretty soon. And the proof is in the numbers. In 2019, Africa's venture capital investments rose to an all-time high. The continent not only had its highest unicorn year, but also recorded the most nine-figure rounds in fundraising in a single year. Africa Arena is predicting that VC funding could increase between $2.25 billion and $2.8 billion, which, if met, will surpass 2019 figures. While activity from global investors seemed more prominent in 2021, local investors are now stepping up their game. Ventures Platform is an early-stage discovery venture capital fund backing Africa's next generation of entrepreneurs, and it is one of the few sub-Saharan Africa-based VC firms who are writing checks for huge sums of money. The firm recently announced the first close of its new $40 million Pan-Africa early-stage fund to invest in market-creating innovations. Well, look, I think it's a combination of factors, but most importantly, I think you have to credit a coming of age. Over the last, you know, five year, five to 10 years, several people have done incredible work uh, just investing in early stage companies and supporting them as they grow, as well as working in improving the enabling environment. When we started uh, Ventures Platform in 2016, uh, when we would talk to investors and we started investing our own money, so we have skin in the game, when we will talk to investors to try to raise capital, they would often ask us about the exits, about the unicorns, and we couldn't point to that. But what you've seen is over the years, uh, the quality of founders has improved, but also the addressable markets, you know, has has become better defined, um, you know, and 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 you know, these companies are uh, are really capturing larger and larger chunks of the market, scaling their revenues, and showing their ability to be profitable. I think, uh, I believe generally that on the scale of balance, uh, we would see a lot more unicorns come out of the continent. And, and really, it's, a, it's, it's simply a function of time. Now, the growth of tech unicorns in Africa is important. And that's because Africa's digital transformation will be key in improving financial inclusion on the continent and also addressing challenges in areas such as intra-Africa trade, transport, health, amongst others. Well, that's where we'll leave it on this edition of Tech Spot. Thanks for watching.